Good morning, Hope Astoria. Thank you for tuning in. Let's enter into a time of worship and sing of his great name. Well, I've heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like, but I've heard a tender whisper of love in the dead of night, and you tell me that you're pleased and that I'm, I'm never alone. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. I've seen many searching for answers. Far and wide, but I know we're all searching for answers. Only you provide because you know just what we need before we say a word. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. And you are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways to us. You are. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways to us. Love so undeniable, I, I can hardly speak. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We look to you, Lord. We find rest in your name, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Wash away my sin 
What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. For my part in this I see nothing but the blood of Jesus. For my cleansing this my plea nothing but the blood of Jesus. Precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing but the blood, nothing but the blood. This is all my hope and peace. Nothing but the blood the of precious Jesus. Blood. This is all my righteousness. Nothing but the blood of Let's sing. Oh, Jesus. Oh, precious. Worthy of every song we could ever sing Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you Jesus, a name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever save. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you. praise we could ever bring 
worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Let's sing the name of Jesus. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever save. The only one. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you. Holy, there is no one like you, there is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. up, Lord. Fill us up, Lord, and send us out to love our neighbors, to be the church. Fill us up, O oh Lord, send us out, O oh Lord. You are worthy to be praised. up, Lord, and lead us out, Lord. Jesus, we worship you this morning. God, you are our good, good Father. Thank you that you've washed us with your blood. You, Lord, are our hope, our righteousness, our Redeemer, our Savior. And Lord, we build our lives today. We build our lives on the firm foundation of your love. God, your goodness, your righteousness, your loving kindness, your faithfulness are everlasting, unchanging, and wholly dependable and true. You are worthy of all our praise, of all our worship, of all ourselves, Lord. 
We worship you and we praise you today. And Lord, as we do, as we worship you, as we receive from your word, Lord, we open our hearts to you, renew us, fill us with your love, with your truth, anchor us in who you are, and send us out that we would be able to be your hands and feet, to serve and to love others, to be a light, to bring hope and encouragement wherever we go, as you've called us to. We worship you, we bless your name. We praise you, Lord. We pray in Jesus' name, and all God's people said, Amen. 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 Well, welcome to Hope Astoria's Sunday service. We're so glad that you've joined us today. My name is Denise. I'm one of the pastors here on staff. If you are new to Hope Astoria, I would love to hear from you. Please feel free to email me at hope, uh, denise at hopechurchnyc.org. I uh, would love to answer any questions you might have, get to know each other. Uh, if you uh, would like to be able to give, uh, information about that is available on our website. You can give online, you can give through the mail. And we also want to encourage you to just take a moment during this time to uh, pull out your phones or hop on your chat and just send a friendly hello to somebody that you're thinking of. Let them know that uh, they're, you're on, they're on your heart, on, on your mind, and uh, just uh, try to stay connected uh, throughout this season. We do have uh, a couple announcements for you today. And just a reminder that you can go to our website, to our One Stop Shop COVID page, scroll down just a little bit, and you'll see uh, upcoming events listed there. And there you'll see, if you were to go there now, uh, two events listed. Uh, the first is for next week on Monday, September 21st from 7 to 8, Do For One is having an info session online. Do For One is an amazing organization that uh, helps those with disabilities disabilities as well as those without to be able to kind of bridge the gap that so often exists between us and to be able to forge friendships and just all the good that comes from that. So if you're interested in learning more, please do email Andrew at hopechurchmyc.org. He'd love to uh, help you get connected and join in that meeting. And please do reach out to him quickly because I think that there's actually a cap on the number of people joining in. And uh, I think that they're quickly filling up. And so do reach out to Andrew. He'd love to uh, help you learn more and get you connected with that info session. Uh, and then we have on Thursday next week, September 24th, we have an online community town hall led by our justice team. We're actually going to be having a series of these about one a month through the end of the year. Uh, it's an opportunity to be able to hear from folks in our surrounding neighborhoods, uh, those surrounding our church, and be able to hear the things that are going on, the concerns that are happening, and as a church to be able to process and think together uh, about how we can respond, how we could be of help how we could be of service to our neighbors and our neighborhood. Uh, so we want to encourage you to tune into that. It'll be online on Thursday, September 24th from 6.30 to 8.30. Please reach out to Donald, the head of our justice team, uh, Donald at hopechurchnyc.org, and he'd be happy to get you uh, all the details. All right, so those are our announcements for this week. Uh, without any further ado, we'd like to continue now on in our service. We've been uh, in a sermon series entitled Strong Tower on the Names of God. Would you give a warm welcome to our lead pastor, Chris, as he concludes our series. Good morning, Hope Astoria. I want to welcome you this morning as we prepare to dig into God's word together. I want to welcome family, friends, guests that are joining us today. Uh, I'm so glad that you're tuning in. My prayer is that you too would encounter Jesus in a fresh and life-transforming way. Today we're concluding our sermon series, Strong Tower, Studying the Names of God. And if this is your first time joining us, I want to encourage you to go to our website and check out our previous sermons. Um, uh, we've had other leaders preach alongside me during this series, and they have preached dynamic messages that I really believe will bless you and encourage you. And so uh, do yourself a favor, go check those sermons out and allow God to speak to you. Uh, I'm going to read a verse of scripture and then I'm going to pray. Uh, and we're going to dive right in because uh, to be perfectly honest, my heart is bursting. I want to really dig, dig in and really preach this message. And so I'm eager to get going. Uh, Exodus chapter 15, verse 26 says this. He said, if you listen carefully to the Lord your God and do what is right in his eyes, if you pay attention to his commands and keep all his decrees, I will not bring on any of you the diseases I brought on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. Would you join me in prayer? 
Lord Jesus, we ask that you would speak to us. Would you cause your word to come alive to each and every one of us? And would you help our hearts to see you as the Lord, our healer, Jehovah Rapha. And so, Lord, speak to us. Holy Spirit, fill our hearts and homes. And would you cause each and every one of us to be transformed by your powerful presence? In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You know, as we begin to uh, dig in, let me give you some context in this verse. And so the book of Exodus is the second book of the Bible written by Moses. Now Moses was a leader, a figure in scripture that God raised up, and he was instrumental in setting God's people free. See, at this time in Exodus 15, God's people had just been delivered from hundreds of years of captivity in Egypt. And at this moment, they're kind of getting to know who God is in a fresh way. They have just seen God strike Egypt with several plagues in order to humble Pharaoh and get Pharaoh to release his people, God's people, to set them free from slavery. Now, at this moment, they've just seen God unleash incredible power and actually inflict diseases upon Egypt in order to get Egypt to let his people go. And so naturally, it, they would probably assume that this is who God is, that God uh, inflicts diseases on people, that God brings malady to people. And so at this moment, God is actually retooling and kind of recentering their vision of him and letting them know, I won't bring those diseases upon you. That's not who I am. That's not who I will ever be to you. You are my people. And he's teaching them to be a covenant people, people who obey and follow him. And in this moment where he lets them know, like, you don't have anything to worry about. This is not how our relationship is going to be. He then says, for I am the Lord who heals you. And in that declaration, he declares one of his distinct names, which is Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who heals us. Now, as we begin uh, the journey of this sermon, I, I need to start by sharing that I often feel a pastoral tension, and I felt it during this series. The tension I can feel at times is when I'm journeying with people in our church, and they'll share what they're going through in their life, and at various moments, it's happened to all of us, it's happened to me many times, there are moments in our life where our circumstances don't conform to the character of God. It's almost like our circumstances resist the reality of God and they stand in direct opposition to who God says he is. And so take, for example, we study the name of God, Jehovah Jireh, the Lord, our provider. That, that's who we believe God is. That's who he says he is. And so we believe God is our provider and all our needs are going to be met. And yet, Many of us are facing circumstances where that's hard to believe. Perhaps we've lost employment or diminished wages or just the stresses of life in this season can make it challenging to believe that God is our provider. And at those moments of tension where our circumstances are not conforming to God's character, as a pastor, I, I feel the tension and I feel like there's two choices at those moments. One, I could either validate what people are going through, and that's appropriate and right to listen, to journey with people, to be present, to not gloss over what they're going through, and to not put like a neat bow on it, to just name it. That's difficult. That's, that, man, that's awful. I'm so sorry you're going through that. But coupled with that choice, sometimes we can make that choice to show empathy and validate our experiences, but we can do so in a way that kind of lessens our esteem of God's character. It's almost like in order to fully embrace you, I let go of who God is and don't fully believe who he is because I'm really trying to just validate your experience. And that's it, accept it as it is. But in reverse, the other choice is to actually so ardently hold on to who God is and who he says he is and to do so in such a way that we invalidate someone's experience, where we don't show empathy, where we, we almost just negate 
what someone's going through. We overlook the fact that, man, their circumstances are not conforming to God's character. And what do we do at those moments? I, I realize I don't just feel that as a pastor. I think actually our culture uh, presents multiple moments in your journey with Jesus and mine where our culture tries to uh, force us to make that choice. And more often than not, our culture tells us, validate your experiences at the expense of God's character. Our culture will tell us, whatever you feel is law. No one can contradict what you feel, what you think. Your opinion is truth. And in order to validate that, we, in, in essence, end up diminishing who God is. Uh, we will, in, in that situation, we tell God who he can be. As audacious and as insane as that proposition may be, that's what happens when we validate our experiences at the expense of God's character. I, I, I say all of that because I feel this tension more often than not, and probably in a very acute way, when it comes to believing and trusting in God's name as Jehovah Rapha, the Lord our healer. To hold on to God fully as the Lord our healer and validate people's experience where sometimes their circumstances don't conform to God's character as a healer. It's a, it's a tough space to be in. And so if you find yourself in that tension throughout this series, as we've been talking about the various character characteristics of God and his names, and your circumstances have been such that it kind of is not conforming to who God's character is, I need you to know we see you, we hear you, we love you, we validate and empathize what you're going through. At the same token, as your pastor, I wouldn't love you if I just validated where you're at and empathized, but didn't point you to the overwhelming, powerful character of God and call you to say, let's believe his character. Let's trust in who he is, even to the point of believing that our circumstances will conform to his character. And so with that said, why do I feel this tension? quite frankly, is because over the years, there have been moments where I've walked with people as they've prayed and believed for a healing to take place in their body and, or for, for a loved one. And I saw the sadness and brokenness of their soul when their prayers weren't answered as they hoped it would be. It's heartbreaking. I've, I've walked with people through that, and it's one of the toughest things. But in addition, I've walked through that. I've prayed prayers and believed for miracles that I was so certain. I didn't have any doubt. I knew that God would do it and he could do it. And then to be disappointed afterwards and to not get the answer to prayer that I was hoping for. And at those moments, the tension is real. So much so that it's quite easy to let go of who God is and who God declares himself to be and just empathize and validate our experience. But regardless of whether you've had that heartbreak, and I've had it as well, today I wanna to call all of us as a church that we are not gonna let our circumstances dictate how we see God, but we're gonna actually see our circumstances through the eyes of God's character. We're gonna see our life through the lens of who He is, not making God conform to our experience, but bringing our experience up to his character and his ways. And in particular, we're going to do that with respect to God as our healer. See, the name Jehovah Rapha, it's actually, it's a compound name of God because it combines the personal name and a word referring to healing. Hence, we get the name, the Lord who heals and I think it's a powerful thing to wrap our hearts around the fact that one of God's characteristics, one of his names, that he wants you and I to be very clear on who he is. He's introducing himself as such, saying, I'm the Lord who heals you. And so for the rest of our days, as we relate to God, we not only should see him as the God who's everlasting, God who is present, 
uh, all the names of God that we've studied, but we should see him also definitively, assuredly, as the Lord who heals us. This is who he is. And we not only know that because of this verse, but we know that throughout Scripture, at various moments, God would heal the sick and, and men broken bodies. But in particular, we see that in vivid display through the life of Jesus. I want to encourage you to read through the Gospels, even a quick read, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and you will be struck by the multiple times where we see Jesus healing the sick, curing and mending incurable diseases. And why I want you to meditate on that and look upon that is because every time we see Jesus healing the sick, we're seeing Jehovah Rapha on display, the Lord who heals. And when we see him at work, we are getting a glimpse of what life should have been prior to sin and prior to uh, corruption entering into our experience through sin and disobedience, we see when Jesus heals, he's giving us a glimpse of what our true original design was supposed to be. We were not created with disease in mind and corruption in our bodies. We were created to enjoy God, to be fully functional in this life. Yet sin has broken that. And we are living through the ripple effects of sin that continues to just devastate human life. But when we see Jesus heal, we get an image of what life was supposed to be like for every single one of us. We were supposed to be whole and healthy and fully alive. And what, what, why that's important is because as Jesus is healing, we're not only seeing a picture of our original design, our original, God's original intention for us, but we're seeing a glimpse of what life will be like in eternity. Jesus demonstrated then and now, at, that, at the time of his life, demonstrated what our lives were going to be, are going to be, when we get to God's eternal kingdom. After this life, we are promised in scripture by Jesus, the one who rose from the dead, that one day is coming where there will be no pain, no suffering, no tears. Our bodies will be fully mended. And we see glimpses of that as Jesus was healing in his earthly ministry. But we also see in the book of Acts, the first recording of the early church, that the phenomenon of healings and miracles was not just confined to the life of Jesus. In fact, in the Gospels, when Jesus sent his disciples out to preach the good news of the kingdom of God, he not only sent them out with a message, he sent them out with authority to heal the sick. We see that in Matthew 10. We see that in other, uh, I believe it, it's in Luke 4. There, there's other passages in the New Testament where Jesus is instructing his disciples to go out and, and preach the gospel, and he gives them authority uh, to heal the sick. And so this is part of who God is, his character, his ways, but it's also part of our life as followers of Jesus. Why we pray for the sick is not just because we believe that God is Jehovah Rapha, the Lord, our healer. We pray for the sick because Jesus commanded his disciples to pray for the sick. And so we pray for the sick in his name because we are following his commands. And we also pray for the sick in his name because this was part of the culture of the early church. Actually, if you read the book of James, chapter 5, verse 13 to 15, we see instructions there of when churches were gathering to worship, when they were singing, when they were praying, when they were expounding on God's word and fellowshipping, they were also instructed on how to pray for the sick. It was a part of their culture to pray for the sick. And so... Why we're wrestling with this, why we're, why we're honing in on this is because even though we have those tension moments, even though some of us maybe have prayed for people who have passed on, and, and maybe we're struggling with a sickness ourselves, and it can be difficult to fully believe who God says he is, we have overwhelming scriptural truth that calls us to believe that this is who God says he is. 
to stand upon his word, to trust him, to access his character through his essence as Jehovah Rapha, the Lord, our healer. We pray and believe not because our circumstances make it easy to do so. Even when our circumstances challenge us in that area, we pray and we, we believe for God to heal because we believe this is who he is. I'll tell you, even though I've been through those difficult moments uh, with people and myself where we're praying for healing and it doesn't happen the way we would want it to happen, I've also seen countless people uh, get miraculously healed throughout my Christian experience. Became a Christian when I was 14. I'm 40 uh, years old now. Over the last 26 years, I have personally prayed for hundreds of people across the country and different parts of the world and have seen with my own eyes God heal, heal people of incurable things. But not just myself, there's people in our church, people on our prayer team, our leaders that have seen God do miraculous things. We have people in our church that have been healed of incurable diseases. We've seen Dr. Bonafide miracles in our church. And so we contend in this kind of conflicted space that theologians call the kingdom of God being present, but not fully present. See, the reality is that though we see the kingdom of God breaking out and evidences of his power at various moments and we see healings, we don't fully see what we know we will experience when we get to God's eternal kingdom. It's present, but it's not fully present. And so we contend in this space. But we contend with faith, believing that God's character is greater than our circumstances. See, my hope and prayer for this series has been that you and I would be armed with the character of God and our relationship with him. That as we pray, as we serve God, that when we meet various circumstances and challenges in life, that for every need we face, we have a name. Every need you and I have in our life, we have a name of God that speaks to that need. When you're facing the need of provision, you have a name, Jehovah Jireh. When you're facing the need to be seen and to be known, you have a name, the God who sees you. Whatever the circumstances that we're facing, we have a name in God. And when you and I are sick in our bodies, I want to encourage you. Go get medical help. Get the help you need. Do everything practically you can. We are not anti-science. We, we thank God for doctors in our church and outside of our church. Do all of those things, but also pray to Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who heals. Pray believing that God is supernaturally powerful and that his character is greater than our circumstances that you and I can declare the name Jehovah Rapha over our sickness, over our bodies, over the, our loved ones, when we, when we hear bad reports and difficult things. These names of God, and, and it's specifically Jehovah Rapha, they're not just information for us to kind of stockpile. No, it's active truth that helps us to navigate through the challenges of life. See, because the reality is you and I are called to supernatural faith. What I mean by that is that the names of God call us to believe in the supernatural character of our God. See, his names remind us that in response to our natural challenges, we can place our faith in our supernatural God. Because again, for every need in your life, God has a name. So when it comes to our healing, I want to invite you to declare Jehovah Rapha over your body. See, I know this, these truths, not just theoretically, not just because I've prayed for people and have seen healings, and not just because in our church we've seen healings, but I've experienced multiple miraculous healings in the name of Jesus. The first big one was when I was 14 years old. I just became a Christian. And 
prior to that moment, since I was a young boy, every single year I was hospitalized at least for a week, sometimes more, with really bad asthma. It was awful. All I wanted to do as a kid was just play and, and, and be active in sports and to feel limited in that way was so difficult. But at the age of 14, I become a Christian and I read in the scriptures that Jesus is a healer and I see all that he does and I see in the book of Acts and Jehovah Rapha, Exodus 15, it was so powerful to me that I, uh, when I was offered to receive prayer, my friend Peter Carrion, God who led me to, to Christ, said, Chris, can I pray for you that God would heal you of asthma? And when he prayed for me, I'll never forget it. He laid his hand on my head as he prayed. But as he was laying his hand on my head, I opened my eyes and I saw his hand was on my head. And that was it. He was kind of uh, like a couple feet away from me. And then when I closed my eyes, I felt hands go in my chest. So much so that I opened my eyes and I looked and it wasn't him. He, he was just still placing his hand on my head. And at that moment, I felt as if these hands were going through my chest and giving me brand new lungs. From that moment on, I've never had asthma, never been hospitalized since was supernaturally healed. I can, I can tell you story after story of, I remember praying for my mother as she was sick with an ulcer and, uh, and, and I was just a young kid in the faith and I remember praying for her and she was about to go to sleep and I prayed for her. I, said, I asked her first, I said, mom, can I pray that Jesus would heal you? And she falls asleep as I'm praying. Um, and as I laid my hand on her, she yells and wakes up. And she's like, what are you doing? I was so like disoriented. I was like, I'm just praying for you. Why are you yelling at me? She's like, why would you put an iron on my stomach? You burn me. I was like, mom, look around. There's no iron. She's like, what was that? I was like, I just laid my hand on you. And I prayed in the name of Jesus. And she was so moved from that moment on. She never had to take ulcer medicine. I, I, again, I can tell you story after story after story of seeing Jesus do what only Jesus can do. But the reality is sometimes people aren't healed. What do we do with that? I wanna give you some encouragement. See, even though the Bible teaches us to pray for the sick, expecting them to be healed, not everyone is healed. And this naturally produces a tension of faith for us. I love the words of Douglas Bannister in the book, The Word and Power Church. He says this, Even the mighty apostles did not see every healing prayer answered with, dramat with a dramatic yes. Paul left Trophimus sick in Miletus. You can read that in 2 Timothy 4.20. Paul told Timothy to take some wine for his stomach problems and frequent illnesses. 1 Timothy 5.23. Even Paul himself appears to not have been supernaturally healed from the ailment he alludes to in his letter to the Galatians, in Galatians 4, 13 to 14. Suffering is an, is an inevitable part of life on a fallen planet. Our broken world is described as groaning and in bondage to decay in Romans 8, 21 to 22. Even Jesus in John chapter 5, verse 1 to 15, we read an account where he didn't heal every ailing person he encountered, and neither will we. Churches that celebrate divine healing from suffering must also celebrate divine endurance in suffering. See, we're in this in-between space where the kingdom of God is already here, but not fully here. And in this age, we get to witness extraordinary acts of God's power that are previews of the full kingdom of God to come. But we also find ourselves longing for our full redemption when pain and sorrow will be fully eradicated. As we pray and believe for miracles and for Jesus to heal, I think the language of the kingdom of God being already here, but not fully, is helpful. It gives us humility as we pray. It keeps mystery in the midst of our faith. 
This is not a formula that we're presenting. We're, re we're responding to the character of God. And we trust who he is. I want to encourage you as we close Every Sunday, we make available our prayer team. As you're watching uh, this, this preview at 10.30 a.m., during this time, if you kind of log into our chat, you could see that there's a Zoom link, and it allows you to join in with our prayer team and receive prayer. I, I've updated our prayer team and let them know what I would be preaching on today to prepare them in faith, to prepare them in prayer, to be praying for each and every one of you that are in need of physical healing. I want to encourage you today to declare Jehovah Rapha over your body, to believe that he is the Lord, our healer, to log in to, to our prayer team and allow them to pray for you and declare the name of God over you and to receive healing. I truly believe that we're going to see miracles take place today and over the weeks to come, that we're going to see healings of all sorts, whether it's muscular healing or, or uh, breathing issues, or it, it, if you're struggling with pain in your hip or, or, or something ser way more serious, uh, migraine headaches that don't go away, um, whatever you're struggling with, a bad report from the doctor, something that's terminal and incurable. Some of you are believing for miracles to happen, for you to be fertile, for you to have children. We're believing that God is going to do something supernaturally powerful today and from here on out. Because whenever you are faced with sickness and brokenness in your body or in someone else's body, we can go to God and say, you are the Lord who heals me. And I believe you and trust you for that. And when miracles don't happen, and, and sometimes they won't happen the way we want, we don't let go of who God says he is, but we hold it all in mystery, in wonder, knowing that God is greater than our circumstances. I want to invite us into this tension, into this space, as we seek to believe God and to hold on to him. And to allow his name to be declared over our circumstances. And to trust that he is greater. Would you join me in prayer as we close? Lord Jesus, I ask, even right now, for every single one of us that are struggling to believe you as the Lord, our healer, would you eliminate our doubt and our unbelief? As we come to you in faith, asking you to heal our bodies. We trust you. We believe you. That you are the Lord who heals us. So Lord, I pray from this day forward. Uh, for those of us that this is a, a new truth that we're holding on to. Would we experience your reality in this area of our lives? But Lord, for any of us that have been disappointed and have struggled at moments to believe you. Lord, would you renew our faith? Would you call us to a faith that believes in your character as greater than our circumstances? Lord, would we see you as you say you are, not as our circumstances try to, to limit you? So Lord, move. Lord, I declare healing over our bodies, over our, our minds and our hearts in Jesus' name. You are the Lord, our healer. And Lord, we did believe it and we declare it over our bodies and over the bodies of our loved ones. Lord, bring healing in Jesus' name. And Lord, we receive it now. Amen. Would you join me in worship?
God bless you, Hope Astoria. I'm so glad that we've been able to journey together during this series as we've grown in our understanding of who God is. My prayer is that every single name of God that we looked at would be deeply embedded in your heart and mind, and that it would expand our relationship with God in unprecedented ways. I want to encourage you this week, join a small group. Let's be in community together during this challenging time. Let's be the body of Christ, encouraging one another, lifting each other up. And we look forward to the day when we will be together in person again. God bless you. Have an incredible week.